Hey guys, it's Jessie V. So today I'm spiky. I am super spiky. This shirt is really cool to me, but the thing is, it's so uncomfortable. And my dog is barking upstairs. I love how my dad chooses this time to rile the dogs up while I'm filming. But yeah, just, um, you might not want to hug me while I'm wearing this. I tried hugging my mom and she's like, whoa. Don't kill me. There is a lot of noise going on upstairs in my house, so if you hear it, it's not ghosts, it's just my dogs and my dad walking around. Actually, I'm gonna go inform them that I'm making a video because they're being very rude right now. Okay, so today I thought it would be pretty interesting to explore haunted graveyards on Google Maps, and not just any haunted graveyards. We are gonna be looking at the most haunted graveyards in the entire world, and the reason why we are looking at these on Google Maps Street View is because a lot of these places are very far from me so I actually can't go and explore them so we're gonna have to use the handy dandy computer to explore them but honestly it's still exciting because Google Street View really allows you to sort of look around and walk down pathways and streets so it's still creepy it's like being there but not exactly. I know I did a video um, quite a while ago about the creepiest things found on Google Maps and I actually used Street View to kind of look at them and you guys love that video so hopefully this one's cool as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna briefly talk about each location and then I will kind of go and explore it so you guys can really see what it looks like there. So be prepared to be scared. Did that rhyme? That rhymed. So the first one we're gonna be looking at is Rookwood Cemetery. I hope I'm saying all of these names correctly but this one is pretty old. In 1868 the cemetery was started and it is located in Sydney, Australia. And what's super interesting is it wasn't always called Rookwood Cemetery. It was actually originally called Necropolis, which means City of the Dead. Why would they call a cemetery City of the Dead? Like that's just scary. But then in 1879, the villagers voted to kind of change the name and now it is Rookwood. So this place is 877 acres in size, which I believe makes it the largest cemetery in the Southern Hemisphere. One million people have their resting place here. One million. Million. And obviously because there are so many people that were buried here, a lot of people that have come to visit these graves have seen ghostly figures. So that is why it has been put in the top, like I think, 10 most paranormal cemeteries in the world. I couldn't find any specific paranormal stories about this area, so we're just gonna go and look at it right now. Honestly, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. If you guys see anything weird, like ghostly figures or just something strange, definitely comment down below. I feel like you guys always find something, like just always. So I think I'm just gonna kind of put a full screen view up here for you of me looking through this area. And I might add some creepy music. Should I add some creepy music? I'm gonna add some creepy music. I know some people hate when I do that, but honestly it just makes it more like mysterious and eerie and it kind of puts you in the mood. So that was definitely um, a bit of a creepy start. At least the sky was nice and blue and there was clouds in the air. Like it wasn't it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but still, I mean, it would still be eerie to visit, I think. The next one we have here is South Brisbane Cemetery. And this one is also located in Australia. So Australia, you guys have some creepy cemeteries. Honestly though, like I'm jealous. Like why can't they be near me? So this one is in Dutton Park, Queensland, Australia. It is 27 acres and the first burial took place in 1870. So this one is also really really old. I feel like the older the cemetery is, the more paranormal stuff happens there. And this one has approximately 19,500 people buried there. So I mean, it's not a million like the other one. Like, holy goodness, a million? But I mean, this, I mean, 19,500 is still a lot, a lot of people. And there actually is a paranormal story about this place that someone wrote. So I'm just gonna read a bit of what they said, because it is, it is pretty creepy. It says, one Sunday afternoon, I went to Dutton Park Cemetery with a friend. As usual, the cemetery 
cemetery was deserted. This one grave caught my attention from the early 1900s. It had a tall rounded headstone with a rusted steel fence surrounding it and a small gate, which was slightly open. And they go on to say how while they were standing in front of this grave, they started noticing that someone else was there standing beside them. It says, in my mind, I could see an outline of a person standing there. And because that gate in front of the headstone was slightly open, this person decides to slowly shut it. And immediately they heard a stern male voice growl, don't touch the gate. And this voice came from the grave. I guess it was more like, don't touch the gate. In my mind's eye, I could see an old man huffing and puffing and shaking his head at my impertinence in touching the gate a second time. So obviously this ghost of an old man was not happy that this person touched their grave. And I hear that a lot. Like when you go to cemeteries, don't mess with anything. It's just not a good idea. Ghosts don't like it when you touch their stuff. Don't touch their stuff. And there's a lot of other stories about when people go on a graveyard tour here and their cameras constantly act up. Like sometimes it won't let them take a picture or sometimes the flash on their camera will just start going on and off. When the camera acts up, apparently like someone is close to you. There is a dead person close to you. Someone said that whenever this happens, I know the spirits of the restless dead are sending me a message to stay away. So I guess a lot of the ghosts in this particular cemetery are not very happy. So with that being said, let's take a look. So unfortunately with that one, we couldn't actually look in the cemetery itself, but we could still see quite a lot from the outside. And honestly, I think the creepiest part about that was the huge, like, creepy trees. And I love trees. They look really cool. But they almost looked like that tree from, um, what's that movie? The Headless Horseman? Sleepy Hollow. You know that really creepy tree? Like those trees surrounding the cemetery looked like that tree. So the next one we're gonna look at is St. Louis Cemetery. And this one is in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I find this one really interesting because most of the graves are above ground in vaults and they were constructed in the 18th and 19th centuries. Apparently it was opened in 1789. So this is gonna be the oldest one that we've looked at so far. And I have never seen anything like this. So prepare yourself. But before I show you, I actually did find quite a lot of information about the ghosts here. It says that a lot of the time these spirits appear in solid human-like form and can actually talk to the people walking through the cemetery, which I found really, really creepy. It says they are sometimes mistaken for being real people. And it also says that two of the entities were restless and upset because they were buried in nameless graves. And so I'm going to talk about these two people that were buried without their name on the gravestone, which is actually, it's pretty, pretty sad. Like, I understand why they're so upset. The first one is the entity of Mary Laveau. I hope I'm saying her name right. Sorry, Mary. It says her apparition has been seen in the area of her unmarked tomb. She usually looks very frustrated, storming along the pathway. She's in a foul mood. She's chanting curses and she's yelling at the living. It says that she once slapped a man who was passing by her grave. And this could have been perhaps because he stepped on her grave unknowingly. Maybe he looked like someone she hated when she was still alive. There's all kinds of reasons behind this. And the second ghost with the unmarked grave. His name was Henry Vines. I really hope I'm saying that okay. Don't come to get me ghosts. And it says that he appears in full solid form, looking very much alive. He is described as tall, dressed in a white shirt, piercing blue eyes, and he's looking for his family's lost vault. Apparently, people have described this guy as coming up to them and asking if they can help him find his family's lost vault. And then no matter what your answer is, he walks away and suddenly disappears. Sometimes he 
will ask people this by tapping them on the shoulder and he will also appear at funerals asking family if there are any room in their vault for his remains so I don't know this guy seems pretty pretty restless but I thought that was kind of interesting information to have um, before we take a look at it so here we go this I mean this is really eerie but also really cool to look at So yeah, that was pretty interesting, right? You know what this looks like though? It looks like they filmed some of the scenes from the originals in this area. Could that be true? Like for some reason that just came to my mind. Am I crazy? Like I feel like they filmed some of the show there. So the next one we're gonna look at is Stahl Cemetery. And this cemetery is also called the Gateway to Hell, which is super creepy. So this town was founded in the 1800s and they soon after built this cemetery. And tons of people say that the Gateway to Hell opens on Halloween at midnight in this cemetery. And let me just read this off. It says, on the appointed hour, a hidden secret staircase becomes unsealed. The stairs appear to lead down into a grave, but they're actually a direct passage to the underworld. So that's really weird and I also read a lot of other stories about how this cemetery has been linked to countless legends involving witchcraft, satanic cults, like all kinds of really evil things have happened in this cemetery according to stories and legends and it's weird because even the local police tell people not to enter the cemetery on Halloween so it's almost like they're afraid as well. There have also been a lot of really things that I don't want to bring up on this channel because of my younger viewers but a lot of bad stuff has happened in the cemetery let me just say that. I even think think that people aren't allowed to go there anymore. I think it's sealed off. I think you have to pay a fine if you walk through this cemetery. And what's also sort of cool is I think an episode of Supernatural was filmed here. I don't know if they actually went to the actual location or if they kind of made their set look like Soul Cemetery. I don't know, but I do remember that episode. So let's take a look at it. So the next one we're gonna take a look at, a lot of you, probably most of you have heard of before, they are the Paris Catacombs. And whenever I hear about the catacombs, I get this really weird feeling because when I went to Paris with my family a few years ago, I actually did a story time on this channel about how we were waiting outside the Paris Catacombs to get a tour and my sister was almost kidnapped while we were waiting. So um, yeah, I just get this weird vibe whenever I think about the catacombs. We never were actually able to walk through, unfortunately, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I just, Maybe it's a good thing. But for those of you who didn't know, the catacombs of Paris are underground ossuaries. Ossuary? Ugh, how do you say the word? In Paris, France, which holds the remains of more than six million people. Six million people underground. It's situated about 20 meters underground, I believe. So it's just like this dark underground maze with narrow passageways. The walls are like completely skulls and bones. I mean, it's it's really unsettling. It's slightly disturbing to think about. And displayed on the wall, I am not gonna say this well at all. I cannot, my French? Mm -mm. But it says, Aret se ici le emperor de la mort. Mort? I'm sorry. But that means, halt, this is the realm of death. And this is above the entrance to the ossuary. So, I don't know, do you really want to go in there? I remember watching, I think the movie was called As Above, So Down Below. 
so below. It's a horror movie about the Paris catacombs and ever since I watched that two years ago, I do not want to go there. But it's a good movie, like if you want to be freaked out, definitely watch it. But I read a few stories about people who have gone through these catacombs on tours and even in large groups, people still get lost and die and oh, it's so weird to read about. It even says some people have been admitted to insane asylums after what they've experienced down there. So woo, creepy stuff. I was actually surprised that on Google Maps, you can actually look around down there. Like I didn't know that was even possible. I didn't know that was a thing, but we can look. We can look in the tunnels, ready? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm like just claustrophobic, so it's probably good that I never actually went on that tour. So the next cemetery is the Bonaventure Cemetery. I think I'm saying that right. Bonaventure maybe? But it is located in Savannah, Georgia, and it was made in 1846, so I've noticed a lot of these cemeteries started around that time. It is known as one of the most beautiful cemeteries in the world, but there is a pretty creepy ghost story behind it. So there is a girl buried there, and she is called Little Gracie Watson, and there's actually a picture of her grave, and on it it says, beautiful and charming little girl. Apparently she died of pneumonia at the age of six, which is really, really sad. My camera keeps stopping every time I talk about her. Like that's so creepy. But it says that Gracie now haunts the striking statue carved in her honor. Many visitors leave coins and toys at Gracie's grave. And some say the little girl cries whenever someone removes them. So if you're giving her a toy or a trinket, don't take it away. Just, just my camera keeps stopping. Another creepy thing is that people say they've seen either tears or blood blood run down from the statue's eyes. So the Bonaventure officials have actually fenced off Gracie's grave to protect her from visitors, but some claim the fence is meant to contain Gracie's playful spirit. So I mean, this is kind of a sad story, but also, also creep at the same time, to be honest. When it comes to like ghosts or spirits that are little children, I feel like they're so playful and they like to play jokes and, you know, trick people and that just freaks me out. But there are also a lot of like angel statues and just statues around this entire cemetery that people have claimed they've seen move. A statue named Corinne, which I'll try and find a picture of, is said to smile at visitors that she fancies. Eerie sounds also surround the lifelike statues, such as crying baby sounds near an infant's grave or giggling children near a tomb of a child. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's take a look at it. I really hope this is not freaking you out too much. Honestly, it's supposed to be the most beautiful cemetery in the world so I don't think it'll be that scary let's let's see I mean the statues might be watch to see if they move
Alright guys, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. I kind of like doing this Google Map Street View thing on haunted locations that I can't actually go to because I'm kind of limited to what's around me. So I was thinking of doing the same thing for like haunted schools, haunted houses, haunted hotels, haunted restaurants, like haunted everything and go on Google Street View. So if you guys think that's a good idea, please let me know. And uh, yeah, just thumbs up for more creepy videos because I just love making them and I hope you guys like watching them. And yeah, have an awesome rest of your day and until next time, bye!